Hi and welcome back guys. In this tutorial we're going to talk about how we can deal with completion of processing in a process group. I get this asked a lot. What happens when I got something coming into my process group and I only need to trigger the next step after everything is finished. So this is very common. You know, you go through a series of strategies of processing the data and then you only want to kick the next layer of your processing when your initial, uh, let's say, batch was completed. So let's see how we can achieve this. So we, in this example, we're going to use a simple flow. We have a generate flow file that's going to generate us an, uh, a dummy flow file. We have a process group that's going to do some logic and then we have an update attribute that's going to receive the, let's say, the completion of all that work. So before we get inside the process group, let's click on it and look at the configuration. For you to achieve this setup, you first have to say the processing group file concurrency, it has to be single flow file per node in our example. And if you hover over this question mark, it pretty much tells you only a single flow file is to be allowed to enter in the process group at time on each node in the cluster. While that flow file may be split into many spawn and many children, no additional flow file will be allowed to enter the process group. So you have to keep that in mind when you build your flow. Basically, the triggering process should come as a single unit. And once inside the process group, if that will, uh, let's say, expand to multiple flow files, that's still okay. Now, the next property that we need to set to go along with our strategy is the batch output process or the process group outbound policy. Basically, when do I need to send data out of this process group? That's the, that's the question he's answering. Here you have stream when available. Basically, whenever flow file reaches the outbound port, it will just leave the process group or batch output. Batch output flows are queued up to the transfer out of the process group by an output port. Basically, they will stay queued until all of the flow files in the process group are ready to be transferred out of the group. So this is what's going to be our option. Let's apply. Now let's go inside our process group and look at the options that we have. I have an input, input port. I have a generate table fetch because this is a very common example. People are asking, oh, you know, I'm querying from a table and I'm Obviously, I'm generating a table fetch and I get n batches because, you know, my configuration, it's as such, let's say I'm on partition size of 100, I'm querying from this table. And sometimes you get, I don't know, 100,000, sometimes you get two, you know, you don't know what, what's going to give you that. And then we do something with it. And here, a routing strategy that I employ sometimes before this concurrency was enabled was the route on attribute. So basically what I do here, the return of the generate table fetch gives you a fragment index and a fragment count. And I employ this particular expression language where I say when my fragment index, basically my current flow file value of this fragment index equals to the total fragment count minus one because you remember um, in an array value starts from zero. So basically, if you have 100 fragment counts, your last fragment index is going to be 99. It's not going to be 100. So keep that in mind. So basically, this will route my last process, um, let's say flow, to the out connection. So let's go ahead and experience with this and see well, how it behaves. So let's start this and let one in. We're going to go here and start this. See, we get one flow in. Let's wait for the generate table fetch to process. So you see right now we get 145 flows. Let's do something with it, which is nothing happens there. It's just a dummy step. And now on route attribute, here's what's going to happen. We get the last item right, based on a route and we get the other unmatched. Basically, that are not last. So if we go and review the attribute, let's do the sixth one. See here, the total fragment count, it's 145 and the current fragment count, it's five. Now, you would say, yeah, they're all Process. So that means the out will allow this flow to go out. Guess what? No, nothing is going to happen here because uh, you still have processes or flows that are stuck in another queue. Basically, this particular queue is the only one that has to receive all the existing flows that are remaining into your process group in order for this relation to be successful. So you see, nothing will be in the unbound. What if we remove this one? So let's say basically. Assuming that the route on attribute, instead of routing those 
uh, relationship of the unmatched to another connection, which is matched as terminate. So let's go to that example. Let's clean this queue and observe what happens. We refresh immediately the queue that was linked to the output port. It's released to the next process. So this is a strategy that you can employ to say, get a signal, do some processing that will involve multiple steps. And then only when those steps are done, because some steps might be asynchronous, some steps might be synchronous or sequential or parallel, only when all of them are completed, it's routed to the output port. Now let's go and see another situation here. Let me stop this one and add this to this processor. So in this scenario, the replace text, let me just do a refresh. The replace text, it was just generate, basically put into a payload, an array adjacent array with a couple of elements that I have here and then I'm splitting it on the root and I'm logging it basically I'm doing nothing with it but the idea here I'm waiting for 10 seconds between each of the flows to be processed imagine that you have something that takes a long time to be processed you're running a query against an object you're doing lookups or whatever you know now let's throw one flow in for that let's remove this one give it one flow you can see that we already have one run the generate replace text run the split JSON and run the log attribute not run one sorry should be run all right so if you see here next let's enable all the processors here put them in the starting state let's go out and allow one flow file to get in to refresh and you can see we still have five in and this is keeps adding up to you will only release the the um, resident flows in this queue when all of the upstream queues are processed so you see right now it, it went through them and success and now he got all of them out. But if you see here, it doesn't send you a single signal. He sends you five flow files. Sometimes you might want five, sometimes you might not want that. So you have to be mindful of creating a routing strategy. So let's take, for example, this routing strategy, attach it to it and observe what happens. Basically the same logic will happen because the split also returns a fragment index and a fragment count. So this relation is gonna link to the last and let's terminate on unmatched. Go ahead and let another flow in come back into it and you can see here the success is already he already went through them let's look at the attributes and see if yeah we get fragment count and frag index and now if we were to run the run on attribute you can see we have only one which is the last going back up ah, actually i should do it again so empty queue so we can see that we only get one out there you go we get one out Basically, we parsed a JSON, we parsed a JSON array, we split it in five, we did something with it, and then when the process is done, instead of him giving us five responses, which will trigger five downstream processes, it just triggers, it just gives us a one flow, just one flow file, and then we trigger the next steps in our processing pipe. All right, so that's a wrap for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something from it. Um, I'll put this template in the description. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, drop your comments, and if you want to learn more about NiFi, join our Discord channel. You're going to find the invite in the description.